We're just so glad to be with you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Melissa's produce for all the beautiful uh, fruits and vegetables that they shared with us. My name is Colleen Worthington. I'm the founder of Neater's Bakery. Yes, I am an old lady. I am 76 years old. We started Neater's when I was 50 and my husband was 52. It's been the best, most wonderful experience of our whole entire life. So we wanted to share that with you with the recipes. I'd like you to look at this wonderful cookbook, All the Binding. It was published in 1937. And when I was a little girl growing up in Utah, I would sit on my mother's counter. She had a green kitchen, so anybody who can remember back to that time. And I would um, love on her cookbook. And this was that cookbook. I was so happy that I got it. I have a big family, and so for me to get it was really a blessing. But look at the wonderful use that it's gotten all through the years. Cookbooks should be a memory, right? Foods, food is a memory for us. Any celebration we have, we have food. Any um, event in our life, there's always food. So I'm going to let my daughter, Amy Peterson, go ahead and tell you a little bit about our cookbook. Yeah, so the, the sign of a really great cookbook is, is that it lays flat, right? When we're in our kitchen, it needs to lay nice and flat. Here's Colleen's mom, my great-grandma's cookbook it lays nice and flat, and here's our cookbook. So as you're making in your kitchen, this is made um, for you to spend hours in creating wonderful memories and recipes. We hope that you take this beautiful book and and you have that memory in your kitchen and your kids up on the counter making memories as a family together. So this is this beautiful cookbook. And mom, tell us, tell me how many uh, recipes are in this I think cookbook. there are 136, but a lot of them have a variation. So there are over 300 pages in the cookbook. You know, I'm wondering, why do you think we have so many recipes, Amy? What do you think about Neaters that makes it so we are sharing so many recipes? Yeah, if you're not familiar with Neaters, we are a seasonal bakery. And so every three months, even in between there, we're changing recipes all of the time. So we have hundreds of recipes that we want to share with you. And some of them are our most popular, like my Nana's pumpkin pie recipes in here. Um, but we have all of these wonderful recipes because we are a seasonal bakery and we've been open for 25 years. The book, yeah. we're celebrating 25 years of meters and, and all of Colleen's wonderful ideas and memories and recipes. So what a great adventure for us to be here today. Look at that outside of the cookbook. These are the recipes that we're going to be making, the citrus salad, and then we're making the fresh fruit, Charlotte. Yeah. So um, I'm going to share my favorite recipe. Can you tell us why your fa recipe is your favorite? Yeah, so um, a memory of with my grandmother uh, making Nana's pumpkin pie. Uh, she used to live down in St. George, and we went down to visit her, and we worked in her kitchen together making pumpkin pie. She would make pumpkin pie, and it didn't matter what season it was. It was always pumpkin pie season at Grandma's house. And um, she taught me the secret, and I'll share. Can I, should I share? I will share um, my grandmother's secret to making amazing pumpkin pie. She um, lived during the Depression, and so you did not waste anything. So when you open that pumpkin puree and you take the evaporated milk, um, she would take some evaporated milk and put it after you scraped out everything you thought you could get out of that can, and then you would pour that evaporated milk in and shake that because you need every little scrap of pumpkin as part of the recipe. And it tastes different. It does. It does. It tastes it different. Does. If you do it that way, it tastes different. Yeah. She was a smart lady. That was for sure. Well, my favorite recipe in here is um, our Irish stew. And I love it. We had an um, executive chef that worked for us who developed this recipe. His, he is just amazing at all the things he does. And um, I've, I've taught it several times. I've Loved on it several times, but there is nothing as good in Utah as sitting by the fire and it may be snowing outside and it's probably about 10 degrees and you're sitting there enjoying that wonderful, wonderful stew with the thing that we're most um, noted for, and that's our bread. You know, we make our bread in the bakery fresh every single solitary day. So right now, if you went in the back of Neaters, you would, in every store, you would find bakers down there making bread from scratch that in the morning you could be able to buy it. And it's, it's been um, a, a great experience for us. We've watched lots of bakeries who have decided 
I, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll have somebody else make it and bring it in. But I promise you, there is nothing as good as a nice hot piece of bread that has been made with a sourdough start that's been cooked in a hearthstone oven. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's just nothing better. So um, that's how we started out. And then we got crazy and started doing all these other re recipes. We had a little note pad by the front register. And when people came in and said, oh, you really ought to make this, then our crew would write it down on the notepad. And at the end of the month, we'd look and see how many times they said you should make this. And if we had a lot of people who wanted it, we really worked on the recipe and tried to get it for them. Why, why a cookbook? Um, why, why a cookbook by now? Well, we started out at our 20th anniversary. And I think it took getting you back to Utah. Oh, was to it? To was it? us on, so I think. You were what? working on this for, for lots and lots of Probably years. Not only about seven years yeah. we've been working on it. Yeah. And we've just been so lucky to have so many people that have helped us along the way. Amy, why don't you talk about the cookbook and how it's organized a minute, would you? Yeah, yeah. So the great thing about this cookbook is um, food with a story is the best part, right? Food is great, but food with a story, food with memories is even better. Um, so you'll notice in in our cookbook we have um, all of the people, and this this isn't this isn't um, all inclusive. These are some people who have really affected us. Our very first pastry chef, um, her kids that came and worked for us, their journey, where they've gone, what they've done, what they've built um, as they were immigrants to the United States. Um, we have uh, Dr. Schiffman, um, who we really got involved in cancer research after my nephew and your grandson was diagnosed with cancer. Um, we have very pivotal people that we wanted to share their story and what they've grown and how they've become just as important as as needers. Yeah. The people, the people who uh, are who build this company, and we wanted to make sure that their stories were in here as well as their very favorite recipe. So. This is Yermonia, and this is her flourless chocolate tort. Um, Amazing. It, absolutely so good. And you'll see stories all along the way talking about how Needers was built, the people who affected it, how important family is to us, um, sharing recipes of their own, and then us sharing recipes from the bakery. I think one thing that's pretty unique for us is every child I have every spouse of theirs and every grandchild has at some point in their life worked at the bakery. So, hey, we should get going, you think? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. We're going to start with making our fresh fruit Charlotte. We've gotten this wonderful fruit from Melissa's Produce. And again, we think we're really glad that she would send that to us. Um, this, do you want to hold up the picture, Amy, yeah. so you can see in yeah. the book? Um, Gorgeous we're, cake. We're going to be making it. I've got a lot of it assembled already. Let me give you a few little tricks. I've taken um, paper, parchment paper, and I put it underneath it. So when I'm done, I can just take it all out and it'll be all nice and clean. I have already got these cakes made for you. You know what? In our cookbook, how many recipes do we have for a vanilla cake? Yeah. We have three different recipes. So one's right up my alley because I have four kids and I don't have a lot of time, but I want to make it at home. And it's a hack for a box cake mix that will taste like your own. The other one is just a basic beginner recipe. And then we have one that's a master cake um, recipe. But any of those. Yeah, could any yeah. person. Could, anybody, anybody. Anybody could be successful. And the rest of it's kind of putting things together. Also in the recipe book, you'll find a buttercream recipe that we use in the bakery all of the time. And this uh, vanilla Whip topping. Yep. yep. This whip topping that we might use as well. So already I have taken the cakes. I have cut them. I have three layers there of cut cake. And I just wanted to show you what I've done in the middle of them all. I have taken a pastry bag. And if you don't have a round tip, you could just go ahead and cut the end of that off. And then I'm just going to go around the outside edge of it. And I'm going to make a little dam for it because I don't want any other raspberry jam running out of it. So we have this wonderful raspberry jam from Neaters that we're going to use. Amy, whose recipe is this? Good question. Nana's. It's Nana's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to spread some of it inside. It is my favorite jam that we have uh, at the bakery. But most all of the jams at the bakery are Nana's recipes. 
So the oh. thing about the thing about um, Gary's mom, she was an ad- she she canned, and her pantry was beautifully organized, and and you would go into her pantry, and she had everything labeled with calligraphy handwriting. I mean, it was absolutely just almost a work of art, of labor of love. It was like and, going to a fruit museum. It was. That's it. It was like a canning museum. She loved to do that. And if ever you went to Nana's house, you came back with a lot of. Food. food, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Whether it was leftovers from the meal you went to or whether it was jars of Alberta peaches or whether it was jars of jam. Damn. So I have made that, so none of it's going to come out, that little dam around it. You can see I've done that twice on this one. You can see the different layers of it. Uh, when you uh, you can run around it like this to get anything that's sticking out. I'm going to go ahead and finish up on this. I'm just going to give this to you with Amy and yep. let you get that out of the way for yep. me. Excellent. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put this right on the top. Neater's jam. Tastes awesome. You can get it on our online store, but you know what? If you used another kind of jam that is really tasty, it wouldn't be a problem. But one thing I have learned for sure, as I have had Neater's, is that it's never going to taste better than the products you do. You make it out of. So if you use a cheap brand of jam, yeah, it's not going to taste this good. So if you don't use great olive oil, if you don't use a great balsamic, then you're going to be a sad person. And I'll leave you that. Thanks, same. And then we have the whip topping here. I'm going to take the whip topping and the whip topping is going to hold on our butter fingers. And I don't think I want it quite up that high as I go around it, but I'm going to put lady fingers. Lady finger. Your lady. Did I say butter finger? You did. We <laughs> wanted chocolate, guys. We wanted chocolate. We'll look like lady fingers, though. Okay. Yeah, lady fingers. So we're going to go ahead and just put that all on the outside. And this is, this whip topping is what's going to hold it on. On those other cookies. And you know, if you wanted to, and you you just want a great, great exercise, make your own lady fingers. But yeah, where we'll do you find all- lady fingers? Um, if, if we're not going to make our own, because I'm not making my own. Okay. I got these on Amazon, my favorite kind. This is what they're going to look like when you take them out. They're just going to be straight like this, and we're going to use them for decoration. Uh, an important part, but I like to make the whipped topping the day ahead. I'm going to make the buttercream two or three days ahead. I may make the cakes three days ahead so that the day of the event, I'm just going to get to spend all that time with my family and the people that I have there and love, and I'm not going to worry about making much. I'm just going to worry about assembling. So this is going to be great for the 4th of July, right? Christmas, what, a, what other and holiday? Celebration. Anytime your house is full of peop- people, what? laughter and love, like this is a great opportunity. Um, and a, easy, a pretty simple cake, especially if you use all the hacks like I would use. Um, it would be pretty simple to put together. Awesome. That's beautiful. And so we're going to use the um, veg scraper to make it nice and smooth on the outside. And then I'm going to go ahead and take these little papers off. So I've got my mess on the paper, not on my plate. And here's the last one. And then the thing I'm going to do is start putting the cookies around the outside of it. So I'm just going to put them up here. Now you'll notice the cookie's taller than the cake, but that's because we're going to fill that part of it with fruit. So Amy, yeah. how about if you just go ahead and put these on? Yeah, I'll do. I'll just talk about the fruit for a minute. Oh, great. So when you're doing your fruit, you want to pick, of course, the very best kind that you can possibly find. But it, all strawberries aren't created equal, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'll dump my strawberries out. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, pick them to use in this recipe. So some are gonna be huge and big. Now this is a pretty big one. And then we've got these little teeny ones over here. And so I'm gonna take out the little ones. I'm gonna take out the biggest ones. And then this one has a little bruise on it. And that happens, it's fruit, right? And so I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm not gonna use it. And I'll go ahead and I'll pop the centers out of it. Now here I picked up one that is, um, has a lot of yellow on it. And I want all these to be really bright red, so I'm not gonna use that one either. But I just take that green right out of the middle of it, and then I'm gonna cut it down the middle. So let me 
show you the difference in these. This is the biggest. That's how big it was. And here is the littlest strawberry. And I want them close to the same size and close to the same color when I go to put them on. And then you're going to want to do the same thing. I've got my two cups right in here. I'm going to go through and pick out the blackberries. This is a hard time of year, uh, especially for berries. You do better with berries in the spring, but I wanted to share this with you today. And so here are the blackberries and I've got blueberries as well. And then my favorite of all, raspberries. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put these on now. The first thing that you want to do is you're going to lay these down flat. Mm, I don't know if you can see that or not. Just laying them flat. And then I'm going to just go back and forth with them and lay all of these base down flat. Take some. And yay! Don't you love strawberries? Oh my gosh, they are just absolutely the best. And this dessert, it was I saw it once and it was so wowy. I thought, can we make that at the bakery? It looks way too complicated for us to be doing it. And then I put it to the pastry chefs and they said, oh no, Coley, this is absolutely simple. So really, truly, anybody could do this recipe. And I'm going to put all of those down flat on the cake. We're going to come back and put layers over the top of this layer. So I'm not really worried too much about having them look absolutely uniform. And let's look at one more in there. Now I've got some strawberries left over. So after we're all through with everything, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put some strawberries so that you can see more of them. So the next thing I'm going to put on are the blueberries and I'm going to put the blueberries in the holes. And I'll have blueberries in the holes. Isn't that amazing that that whipped topping will hold on perfectly, right? Yes. And look how beautiful those lady fingers are. So lady fingers are a shortbread cookie that's uh -huh. nice and long. That's that's a good description of of those of a lady finger. Uh huh. And when you get them, be sure that you get the long ones. And again, something that's readily available in most stores, and certainly available on Amazon. Okay, I'm about got all these in. So I'm going to just save a few just to top it, make sure I've got a really nice topping in it. My favorite raspberries. Yeah, nice. So you can see I'm getting taller now, right? So it's going to come up to the very edge. Almost to the top of those lady fingers. Yeah, and right the, over the top. The middle will be taller than the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and finish those raspberries in there. Switch up. Then we've got the blackberries. And we're going to put those on, but now I'm kind of going back and I'm going to put these strawberries on at different angles because I want to see this beautiful inside part. So I'm going to stick it on. Be careful that when you stick it, you don't put it so into it that it takes off the lady fingers. Here we go. You're making a beautiful picture of berries. Oh, thanks, Amy. Yeah. That is so much better for me. I'm going to put a few of them over, but I'm, I want to see these insides and all the variety of them. And now the thing I'm going to do, can you believe how easy this is? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Too. It's just so incredibly easy and it's really wow when you take it out for everybody. They're going to think, oh my goodness, you've spent a lot of time in the kitchen, lady. Okay. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put some of the blackberries, some more of the blueberries. I'm going to make it so it mounds in the top. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. And we'll go ahead and just get those others on. Okay. That is so pretty. And now we're going to tie a ribbon around it. Yeah. So I think this makes a really great 4th of July cake. And you do a ribbon that's red, white, and blue, right? Oh, yeah. We will. Christmas, Valentine's Day, ribbon with hearts on it. Yeah. I'm going to try and do this upside down, you guys. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it. She is right. good at it. Uh, it would be beautiful with the ribbon. It would be beautiful without the ribbon. This is a classic kneader's look with the ribbon. Um, all finished and I'll trim up the ribbon and so that it's not quite so long. What a beautiful uh, dessert um, to have your family uh, in your home celebrating any time of the year. You could really do it. 
Um, but what a beautiful dessert. That looks beautiful. I really, really like it. So the trick to cutting this, I'm sorry, Amy. The trick to cutting this is you have the lady fingers as your guide. And so you're never going to slice down through one of the lady fingers because that's not going to happen for you. That would be a mess. But I'm going to use, and I like to do two of the lady fingers and slice down it and then come over two more and I can slice down it. When you get it to this point, you'll want to put it in the refrigerator and keep it there until you're going to have, uh, until you're going to serve it. Also, it would make a great centerpiece, don't you think, on the table? Beautiful. Yeah. Enjoy with your family. Yeah. Make some memories. Next in the kitchen, we're going to make the citrus salads uh, from this tw beautiful 25th anniversary cookbook. Thank you again to Melissa's for sending us some beautiful citrus for the salad as well. So this is a quick, simple, you're a busy mama salad. I'll give you some some tips along the way to make it faster. Do you think, how many minutes do you think this is going to take? Oh, I, you know, I'm going to use rotisserie chicken because I, oh, I'm not going like to cut the chicken. I'm going to get a rotisserie chicken and I'm going to pull it apart really quick. Everything else is ready to go. I'm going to peel the oranges and I'm going to open the salad bag. Okay. That's about it. Maybe if you want to make the dressing from scratch, it's really easy and you can throw that together pretty in a pretty fast. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, pretty fast. So we're going to start with mixed greens. Um, I just have that all ready to go. To that, we're going to add our dried cranberries and about a half a cup of dried cranberries, a half a cup of our uh, sunflower seeds. I'm going to save a few of these to finish and garnish at the very end. I took my rotisserie chicken because I'm going to cheat because I'm a busy mama. So I have my rotisserie chicken to add to this salad as well. And then I'm also going to put our beautiful oranges. I saved some of our rounds just so I can have it be pretty. It can be easy and pretty at the same time, right? Oh, yeah. Beautiful citrus added. You could do what else? What other kind of citrus could you add to this salad? Well, you know, I think it could be um, mango would even work oh, for you. Delicious. Mango and some grapes, maybe, and some pomegranate. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, we're going to finish this off with just a few um, circles of rounds of um, red onion. Gosh, red onion just makes everything just a little bit better. Love the contrast in color. Yeah, I'm going to just stick those nice rounds on the top. And then I'm going to add some freshly sa shaved mm, How did you do that? Yeah, so... I just took the good cheese. Gosh, if we're going to have cheese, it's got to be really good cheese. Um, and I just took a vegetable pillar and I just made these nice long um, ribbons of Parmesan cheese that I'm going to add to the salad. So we'll finish it with these guys. Um, and I, if we're going to put cheese, we got to put a lot of cheese on there, right? I like it that way. Beautiful. And then I'm going to finish with just a few more of our sunflower seeds right on top. And we're going to jump into the balsamic. Uh, recipe. Okay. While I'm making that, um, if you could think of maybe what what was what was the recipe or the moment that pulled most on your heartstrings as you were putting this together, Mom? You know, when we chose the ten or fifteen people that had been really meaningful in helping at Neaters, and that's not to say that there haven't been a jillion others. And people say to me, "This cookbook's about you," and it's not. This cookbook's about the Neaters family, and it's not just our family. It's all the people who has helped us along the way, like Hermonia that you talked about. Yeah. Uh, Gladie Begay has a wonderful story in here, such a sweet, sweet lady who was um, grew up in the reservations in the Four Corners, and Gladie um, came into our store one day and said, what do you do with your day-old bread? And I said, what should we do with our day-old bread? We're throwing it away, and she said, you should donate it. You should donate it, and every day I'll come get it, and I'll freeze it, and then I'm going to take it to the reservation. There's a beautiful picture of her in here, and it, she's holding a loaf of our rye bread, and she said to us, that is a holy bread for them because it looks like looks like our people, the die people, when they're saying praises to God. They're kneeling beautiful. down, and they call it a kneel-down bread. I love that. I love that. Such such beautiful memories and such great people that we get to share this journey with. Yep. So on this dressing, I'm just making the balsamic dressing that's in the cookbook. Um, I have a good balsamic vinegar. Spend some time finding something really great. Um, to that, I've added the garlic, a little bit of brown sugar. If you don't want to put the brown sugar in, you can totally go without the brown sugar. It just adds a nice sweetness to it. I'm whisking that together. I'm going to put um, a little bit of salt and a little bit more pepper in here to give us some nice flavor. 
And then to that, I'm just whisking in our olive oil. And it's just a very simple, yummy, a little bit of sweet. Go ahead and leave that sugar out. If you want to leave the sugar out, you can leave that out. And then this is that beautiful dressing to just drizzle right over the top of the salad. Buy the very best balsamic, buy the very best olive oil that you can yeah. possibly buy. Right. right. Very best Parmesan cheese. We're yep. not skipping on the Parmesan cheese, are we? So to that, I'm just going to drizzle this dressing right over the top of the salad. And it's a quick, easy, you've got your protein, you've got lots, lots of good vegetables, greens, and you're ready to go. What a delicious look. Salad. So good. Okay. I'm going to just have to have a piece of cheese and a little balsamic on it. Ah. Uh. Thank you for being in the kitchen with us today. It's been such such a pleasure to host you in my mom's kitchen and to talk more about Neaters and the beautiful journey of this cookbook. Thank you so much.